morning again. Welcome uh, here to Unity. Want to pray like Jesus? Learn the power of affirmative prayer. That's my title. Okay. And we are going to be exploring Jesus' process. Okay. Uh, Jesus had a special way of praying. To be honest with you, uh, there really aren't any recordings of just what Jesus was saying when he, those many times when he went up to the mountain to pray. But we can take a cue from his disciples that Jesus had a different way of praying because in the sixth chapter of Matthew, they actually asked him, teach us to pray. Now, these are grown men, okay? These are learned Jews who have been brought up in their culture, okay, with their 630 different spiritual laws that they must attend to in order to get into heaven. And they had their own way of praying, but Jesus brought something different, a kind of different approach, a different perspective to this prayer. Uh, for one thing, uh, we don't have any recollection that Jesus was begging or beseeching God for anything. Jesus had a lot of wonderful things to say about himself, but he had wonderful things to say about all of us. He said, I am the light of the world. Okay. But he also said, you are the light of the world. He told us that if we pray, believing that what we pray for, we shall receive, we shall receive it. In unity, we call the kinds of prayers that Jesus made affirmative prayers or prayers of faith prayers of knowing, prayers of acceptance of this good. Because Jesus also told us something. He said, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And so exactly why do we need to pray at all? Why did Jesus say, ask, seek, and knock? Because he said, your Father knows what you need, and it is God's good pleasure to give us what we need to live happily and joyfully. It's my belief that we pray not for God. God doesn't need our prayer or our thanksgiving. We pray because there's something in that process that opens up a channel in us through which that presence of love, that presence of inspiration and, and healing can flow through. So it's kind of like uh, our prayer is like the key that opens the door in us. I'd like to share a story with you. It's about these guys, actually they were, they were hikers, who learned, one day they learned a lot about prayer. They're, the guys were Joe, uh, their buddy Dave, and of course Bob. And they were out hiking in the wilderness area. And they came, they came upon a large raging river. It was violent. Uh, and they needed to get across, but they didn't know how to do it. So Joe prayed to God, please God, give me the strength to cross this river. And poof, God gave him strong arms and strong legs. And he swam across this river. It took him two hours, and he almost drowned twice, but he made it. And then Dave saw this, seeing this. Dave prayed to God, saying, Please, God, give me, give me the strength and the tools to cross this river. And poof, God gave him a rowboat. And he was able to row across this river, and it only took him about an hour, uh, except for almost capsizing the boat several times. And he almost drowned. Now, Bob, Bob has been observing his buddy's prayers. And so he figures, you know, he's going to do this too. He'll get across this river. So Bob sees how it has worked out for the others, and Bob prays, please, God, give me the strength, give me the tools, and give me the intelligence to cross this river. And poof, God turned him into a woman. <laughs> she looked at the map. She hiked upstream just a couple, a, a hundred yards or so, and she walked across the bridge. <laughs> All three men believed in the power of prayer to get them across that raging, violent river. Okay. They truly did, and 
their prayer was answered. They got across. But I got to tell you, Bob was on to something there, okay? He said, he prayed, give me the strength, give me the tools, and give me the intelligence. Now, I'd like you to note something else in the story that I think is important. Uh, that these three guys, though they prayed and they received an answer to their prayer, their prayer did nothing to change that raging, violent river. Nothing. It was still raging and violent when they crossed. This is not Jesus going out, walking on the water, saying, peace be still, you know, and the disciples in the boat rocking, fearing for their lives in the storm. This was something altogether kind of different because what they learned is that their prayer is not so much for changing things out there as in changing something inside and empowering them to meet every raging storm that appears in their life experience. Eric Butterworth, I think, is the one who coined that. He said that, you know, prayer is not so much for changing things. It's really about changing, changing us. But, you know, once we are changed, we then can go out and change the world. That's kind of how that works, I think. Prayer changes us, and then we are spiritually equipped to change things around us, about us. But that begins inside, within Late Unity minister and poet laureate, James Dillard Freeman, who wrote the, um, the prayer protection that we share every Sunday. And that prayer went to the moon uh, because one of the astronauts carried it with him. He wrote a story called Hercules and the Hydra. And I, I love this story. Okay? Uh, in his section from this story, James Dillard Freeman wrote, you know, people pray and they ask for things. They ask for many things. They pray, change my life. They, they cry, change my job, or the condition of my health, or, or change my spouse, or give me new friends, or, or, or a new heart, or even better, a new bank account. But he wrote, rarely do they cry, change me, change my thinking. Yet this is all that we can really change. For men have power, he wrote, over nothing in this world except their own thoughts. But this is all that we really need to change. Freeman continued, when we change our thinking, we change the center from which everything else is viewed in our lives and from which everything else takes shape and form. Basically, he said, what we must change is our own self-concept. We're not worms of the dust. We are children, expressions of the most high God. Jesus said that we were worthy of God's love and care, which we accept when we learn to forgive ourselves and others for those times when we're not expressing at the highest and the best that we are capable as spiritual beings. We are spiritual beings, and we are discovering through our humanness what it means when Jesus said, the kingdom of God, the place where God dwells, it's not out there somewhere in the cosmos. The astronauts didn't bump into, you know, the kingdom of God out there when they were traveling. Okay. Because in Luke 17, 21, we have Jesus saying exactly where the kingdom is. The kingdom of God, he said, is within you. That's a powerful, powerful awareness to have. The kingdom, every possibility, every strength, every opportunity to experience wisdom and understanding and love and joy and wholeness is within you and me in this kingdom. We are learning right now at any time that we take the time through prayer. And prayer, what is prayer? It's many things to many people, but basically prayer is whatever we do that brings us into an awareness of God's presence in us, around us, in the world, in nature, okay? Um, you could be sitting by that violent, raging, raging river and just enjoying the sound of the water and realizing that that source of that water, nature, is God. And that can be prayer. 
You can be down on your knees, okay? And I was brought up mainly in the Baptist tradition, and boy, those preachers prayed, okay? They were shouting, okay? And they were dancing, and they were... But, you know, God is there, but also God is in the quiet expression, the quiet awareness. And I understand from personal experience that uh, when we are raging as the river, it's sometimes very hard for God to get through with that communication. God speaks to us. And, you know, it's not always words or like, BJ, this is what you need to do, okay? Sometimes it's a feeling of certainty, a feeling of peace. If I have been struggling with something or you have been struggling with something and God speaks in a feeling that it's going to be all right, and you find yourself filled with an idea that you can, you can give shape and form to. So prayer is this, it, it is this experience that connects us consciously with God. So yes, God doesn't need us to pray, but we need it because again, our prayer, that which we do, say, think, that connects us with that awareness of God, opens that channel through which God can speak in us. Freeman wrote negation, and that is all of those negative things, the, the thoughts of lack and that we're unworthy, and all of those things here that we let trouble and, and, and uh, torment us. He wrote, negation is like the hydra that Hercules had to destroy. It had nine heads, and every time Hercules lopped off one, two more grew in the place where that one was. And as long as Hercules kept hacking away at the heads, he had no power over the hydra. The life-negating thoughts, he wrote, uh, that we wrestle with have many heads in our life experiences. And we have to realize that we have to destroy not the heads, but the whole beast. We have to get down to the roots of that negative or limiting thought, attitude, belief, habit. Because the source of all of these negative things is our basic attitude towards ourself, towards life, towards our world. Freeman explains that as long as our thoughts are negative and focused on lack and limitation, we shall be surrounded by these ugly hydra heads snarling and snapping at us. As long as we perpetuate the feelings that we are unworthy, inadequate, and unloved, this sensual falsehood on which we base our thoughts about who we are and who others are, uh, it spawns, he says, a whole horde of false fears. It's like, he said, and this I've personally experienced, it's like trying to get rid of bindweed in your garden Prune by pruning away the, the, the tendrils. The great root of the plant lies hidden underground, and, and we've got to dig to get that out. Continue to think that you are unloved, writes Freeman, and that thought will put forth 10,000 stems and leaves and, and, uh, and flowers and seeds. Pinch off that fear, and it has already formed two more. But come to realize that you are the beloved child of God, the capable child of God, the perfect child of God, and the bindweed that clotted your life all the twisted stems and, and throttling leaves, well, they will wither away. And this is what prayer does for us. It helps us to whittle away the bindweed that comes up, that is created in our minds and hearts as we succumb to the appearances out there that give us all these negative messages about who we are and about what life is. This is what using affirmations does for us. Prayer is a conscious communion with God, the Holy Spirit, divine love, the principle of absolute good. And to pray effectively like Jesus, we need to see ourselves like Jesus sees us, saw us. Again, he claimed great things for us. But, you know, even though our praying may not affect changes out there. Something is always transformed in us when we engage in this conscious connection with God. 
And Jesus gives us some instructions on how we can make this prayer connection and a guideline. And the Lord's Prayer, as given in the sixth chapter of Matthew, is a kind of template. We don't have to say and, and preach and pray, Our Father who art in heaven, because Jesus says, Pray in this manner, pray in this way. And he gives us in the Lord's Prayer a, a kind of cheat sheet, okay, that we can use to develop our own words, our own positive statements. Included in your program is and a spiritual interpretation of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and I got this from, hmm, let's see, what source is that? Uh, I don't know if I wrote it on there or not, okay? Um, but in Eric Butterworth's book, Discover the Power Within You, he has a chapter on the forgotten art of prayer, and he gives this interpretation of the Lord's Prayer. And you are invited to use that to kind of create your own Lord's Prayer to work with the words, the major words that Jesus said. Break those up, as you see uh, on that guideline there, and come up with your own affirmation and what that means for you. We had an exercise in our morning class one time where we actually worked and created our own Lord's Prayer. It was pretty fun to do. It was amazing to hear uh, what other people shared on that. God is Holy One. Our unity statement of being expresses this. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives. God the good, omnipotence. And prayer is a way to connect with that consciously. So uh, I invite you I, um, to enthusiastically embrace this concept of praying positively. Jesus prayed accepting God's good. when. He arrived finally at the home of Mary and Martha and found that their brother Lazarus uh, had passed away and had been dead for four days and entombed. Uh, the shortest verse in the Bible is presented in the book of John, and that is Jesus wept. The Bible, the book of John tells us that Jesus felt for Mary and Martha and for all the mourners who had gathered at their home um, uh, because of Lazarus passing on. And he said to them, your brother is not dead. And he proceeded to pray, uh, which was basically Jesus saying, Father, I know that you hear me, and I know that you hear me always. Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. This was Jesus' prayer. Next thing we know, Lazarus comes forth. Now he's looking like a mummy. He's all wrapped up, okay, with the, uh, with the cloth that they, they buried their dead with. And uh, Jesus says, somebody, somebody unbind him. Okay, so they rush to take all this off. And we have renewed life here. This is a parable for what happens with us when we engage in the prayer process using positive, affirming words. Instead of praying for, pray with thanksgiving. Thank you, God, that the guidance that I need is flowing through me right now. Thank you, God, that the healing that my body needs okay, is working its way out in my experience right now. Instead of, please, God, heal me. Please, God, guide me, direct me. Pray like Jesus, accepting that it is God's will that you experience life and wholeness and joy in your life. And this is how we pray like Jesus. I have no doubt that Jesus, our advanced spiritual brother, okay, uh, probably worked on this way ahead of, and was probably way ahead of where we are now. But every prayer, every conscious connection with God yields positive experience for us if we're open to receive it. God bless you.